Okay, ready for the second half of our discussion about, uh, about, about regular expressions. So, of course, we introduce regular expression by saying that they are a way to describe a language. Specifically, the language that we're trying to describe is a language that is uh, recognized by a finite state machine, decided by a finite state machine. So, we did a couple of examples. We gave a, a formal definition of both the syntax and the semantics, and, and, and then a couple more examples. And now we're ready to, um, to prove that, uh, that, that a language is recognized by a finite state machine, if and only if that language is described by a regular expression. Okay, so broke the proof into two halves, a half that talks about, um, a half that talks about the, um, uh, um, uh, if, uh, if the language is described by a regular expression, then there's a finite state machine. And then there'll be a second half that says if the language, if there's a finite state machine, then there's a regular expression. Both halves are constructive. That means that, for example, this first part, if you give me the regular expression, I can give you the finite state machine, and the argument will go through how to do that. Okay, so let's start in. So let's see, if you have a regular expression, there are three ways for it to be small. There are three ways for it to be a single character. It could consist of the empty set symbol, it could consist of the empty string symbol, and it could consist of a single character from the language. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to produce a finite state machine for each possible case. So if the regular expression consists of the empty set symbol, then, of course, the associated language is empty. I want a finite state machine that accepts no, that recognizes no strings. Well, that's easy. Here we go. I gave it a start state because the definition of finite state machine is it's got to have a start state, but it doesn't have to have any final states, and so it can't accept any strings. This is a non-deterministic machine in that I don't have an arrow leading, leaving this Q0 that says A, for example, but we already know that if you have a non-deterministic machine, you can convert it to a deterministic machine, so we're not going to worry about that. All right, so what if the regular expression consists of just the one symbol, the empty, the epsilon, the empty string symbol? Well, so what I want is a finite state machine that accepts the empty string and only the empty string, and that would be this guy right here. It, it's got uh, Q naught, and that's an accepting state. So if you turn the machine on and, and the, what's on the tape is just nothing, it's the empty string, then this machine will accept that. It's, again, it's a non-deterministic machine, so if you give it like an A, it, it'll go off to nowhere. The child process will, will, will stop, or however you like to think of it. So this non-deterministic finite state machine accepts only the empty string. Okay, well, any guesses as to what, what, this, what this guy does? So uh, this machine, of course, if you give it just an A, then it goes into a, a final state, and um, if you give it anything other than an A, including the empty string, it doesn't accept it. If you give it an A followed by something else, it also doesn't accept it because there are no arrows leaving Q2. So what we've got is that we've got a, a machine for each of the smallest regular expressions. So then you know how this works. We've done this kind of thing in mathematics lots of times. Next, what we have to do is we have to think about what happens when you build machines up from, from when you build regular expressions up from smaller things. So no longer are they the smallest possible kind. Now they are constructed somehow from two other regular expressions. So like what? So for example, we'll have a regular expression can be uh, two regular expressions with a vertical bar. A regular expression can be two regular expressions with a concatenation. A regular expression can be a regular expression that, with a star. So to set myself up for each of these three paragraphs, I need to have here a, uh, uh, let's see, the two regular expressions that are the components, and they'll be uh, the, 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 the sort of uh, proof by induction works by saying that there is, uh, uh, if you have R0, then there's an associated machine, and if you have R1, then there's an associated machine. And, uh, and now I'm ready to go through the three paragraphs. So let's see here. Um, if, uh, if I have R0 bar R1, pipe symbol R1, or R1, then I'm going to create a machine that recognizes the language described by R by joining the two machines M0 and M1 in parallel. And we saw that in the example. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a Q0 in my terrible handwriting, going to make a Q0, and there'll be an epsilon transition 
to the machine M1, no, M0, sorry, and there'll be an epsilon transition to the machine M1. And this epsilon transition goes to the start state of M0, and this goes to the start state of M1. So if you get a string and, and it is of the type accepted by M0, well, you use the epsilon transition to jump to M0. If you get a string that is of the type accepted by M1, then use the epsilon transition to jump to M1. And there's a certain amount of annoying bookkeeping. I mean, you have to rename all the states so that none of the states from M0 have the same name as the states from M0. But it's all nonsense. We're not going to worry about that. Okay. So that takes care of the first paragraph. So we must be doing concatenation next. Concatenation calls for serial joining. So we've seen this one before. You take M0 and you make an epsilon transition to M1. And let's see, again, there's some annoying bookkeeping. You have to, this epsilon transition only goes between the final states, any final states of M0 and the start state of M1. If you have a final state in M0 that you have to, you have to uh, uh, sort of erase the double circle and, and, and go to the start state over here. But, but, but really, again, that's all, uh, that's all nonsense. The main idea is that you're making a serial connection. Okay, and then the last one, what about star? Well, star is you've got a machine M0, and you're going to make an epsilon transition with itself. That's all. And again, you're taking the final states here, and you're linking them up with the initial state there, and you've got to make the initial state be, uh, you've got to change the initial state to be a final state. So Q0 gets two circles just because you've got to be able to accept the empty string. But, but again, that's not the big idea. The big idea is that the epsilon transition solves these three problems for you. That's why we introduced the epsilon transition, because we knew we were going to have to solve those problems. Okay? Okay, so what we end up with then is that if you give me a regular expression, I can look to see how it's decomposed. And once I find out it's decomposed, for example, if the very last operation is a vertical bar, why then I do the first thing. If the very last operation, excuse me, is a concatenation, why then I do the second thing. And if the very last operation is a star, then I do the third thing. Okay, so if you give me a regular expression, I can produce the associated finite state machine. <clears throat> the second half is to say that if, if you have a finite state machine, there's an associated regular expression. Okay, so the idea here is very similar. The idea is to start with a finite state machine and eliminate the states one at a time, keeping the accepted language the same. So we're going to start with a finite state machine and somehow uh, uh, chunk it. So what do I mean by chunk it? Well, it's very straightforward in, in this particular example, so that makes it a good first example. So I have, this is the inside of some machine here, and I have some QI and some, uh, some, some QO, they're supposed to be, you know, in and out. And then uh, in the middle, I have some state, I'm going to get rid of that state Q. I'm going to replace this 3 with this 2 over here, and instead of saying A, it says AB. So the idea there is that I'm, I'm generalizing these transition graphs so that I'm labeling the edges not, with, uh, not, not just with members of the alphabet, but in fact with regular expressions. A, B is the regular expression made by concatenating the, the regular expression A and the regular expression B. Okay, so we're going to gradually take a machine that has, let's say, seven states, and then we'll make it have six, and then five, and then four, and then three, and then we get down to the end, then, then that'll be the, the regular expression left on the graph edge will be the, will be the answer. Okay, so just a, a little bit more detail here that the first one was too easy, so we have one that's uh, at least a little bit more sophisticated. So uh, here we're looking at... Um, we're looking at a reasonably complicated machine that, in particular, has a, a, some kind of loop in it. Okay, so we're going to take here, uh, we're going to take that the, uh, it says capital A, capital E, capital C, and capital D are regular expressions, but I wrote them as lower so that you can think of them as upper, I apologize. So uh, you start by introducing a new state guaranteed to have no incoming edges right there. And a, and a new state all the way at the end guaranteed to be unique, F. It's a final state, so it's a double circle state. And now I'm going to eliminate Q1, the one in the middle, the one with the loop, as below. 
So we have here uh, d or, so you can get from q0 to q2 by taking d, so that explains the d or. You can get from q0 to, uh, to q2 by taking an a, maybe some b's, and then a c. Okay, so that's what it says. It says d or a, some b's, maybe zero many of them, but anyway some b's, and then a c. Concatenation of A with B star, concatenated with C. A anyway, there we go. So we will translate this machine here into this machine here. Now, the exact role of E and F is not perfectly clear yet, but it should be clear how I got rid of that, that state in the middle, state Q1 in the middle. Okay, so we are replacing uh, a, a more complicated machine with a simpler machine, simpler in the sense that it lacks that middle, um, uh, uh, lacks, lacks the middle circle. Okay, now the exact proof is in the book, but I'm going to go through an example. That seems like seems to me that sometimes with these complicated things that you can uh, you can do it in too much generality. The the book is absolutely there for uh, to tell you exactly what to do, but sometimes the right thing to do is to uh, is to do an example. As an introduction. Okay, so here we go. There are uh, there are a number of things to do. So the first thing to do we start with this machine here. The first thing to do is to introduce the e and the f. So we introduce E to be the initial state, we introduce F to be the ending state. When we finish all the way at the end, I'm going to click forward to all the way at the end. I'm going to come back, don't worry, when I, when I finish, there we go, all that will be left is E and F. And that will be the answer, that's the desired regular expression. Okay, so back we go, back and to actually do the work. So we started by introducing E and F here, started by introducing E and F. And then uh, next up is, I'm going to eliminate Q2. I've just picked Q2 just, just to pick something. So I picked Q2, and I'm going to eliminate Q2. And, of course, this basically works the same way that, um, that, that, it, that it did in the previous slide here, which is why I did it in the previous slide, is that you can get from Q0 to Q1 either by taking A or by taking, uh, excuse me, you can get from Q1 to Q0, either by taking B or by taking A, some B's, and a B. So again, you can get from Q1 to Q0 either by taking A and some B's and a B, or else by taking this B. So that's what it says, B or A, B star B. And then back up to what, I, to, to what I started to say a second ago, you can get from Q0 to Q1, well, it happens never to go up. So you get from Q0 to Q1 by A. So I kept in the, I kept in the A below, and I, I added this regular expression here, and I kept in this A below. So I eliminated Q2 by replacing all the, I, of course I erased the Q2, but I also replaced all the connections by regular expressions. Sometimes it lo doesn't even look like a regular expression, it looks like a single character. But anyway, if I need a regular expression, I replace it with a regular expression. Okay, so I eliminated Q2. Next up, I'm going to eliminate Q1, and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to click back and forth a little bit. So I'm eliminating Q1, and you can see what's happening here, so I'm ending up with a, a machine with even fewer states. So back I go, oh, I clicked too far. Back I go to Q1. Here's Q1. I don't know why I drew this. I don't know why I drew this green and green. And, oops, come on. Green and green. I made a mess of things. So I'm going to eliminate Q1. So you say to yourself something like, well, how do you get from Q0 to F, and how do you get from Q1, sort of stuff. So, so what do we have to do to get rid of that Q1? For example, there's an epsilon transition from Q1 to F. So what do we have to do to get rid of that Q1, but end up with the same transitions? So the answer is, you get from E to Q0 in exactly the same way, you get from Q0 to F in a new way, and you get from Q0 to itself in a new way. So let's go back and think about those. To get from E to Q0, well, that's no change. To get from Q0 to F, well, to get from Q0 to F, you can either take an epsilon transition, and there it is, come on, there we go. You can either take an epsilon transition, or to get from Q0 to F, to get from Q0 to F, to get from Q0 to F, you can take an A over to Q1 and then follow it with an epsilon transition. So you can take an A over to Q1 and follow it with an epsilon transition. Here is the A, 
there is the A, and then followed with an epsilon transition. So to get from Q0 to F, you, you have two choices. It's either an epsilon transition or an A followed by an epsilon transition. And again, I'm sorry about the clicking back and forth. It didn't all fit on one slide. That's what it says. It says, it says epsilon, trans, epsilon transition or A followed by epsilon transition. And what about Q0 to itself? Well, you see what's going to happen here. To get from Q0 to itself, exactly what you're doing is you're going from A, you, you take A first and then follow it with the, uh, the B or A followed by A, B star B. Let's go over to the next page. You take, uh, you could take the empty string or you could take A and then you follow it with one of those two, either the B or the A, B star B. So the basic idea is clear here. You ask yourself, how can I eliminate that state and still be able to do the same actions? Oh, darn it, I'll keep clicking it too, too much. Okay, finally, we're going to eliminate Q0. So we ask ourselves, how do we get from E to F? And the answer is, to get from E to F, you take an epsilon transition, followed by uh, epsilon transition or A epsilon transition, or you can take uh, epsilon transition, some number of these, and then follow it with the epsilon uh, or a epsilon. And there we go. So it's epsilon and then epsilon or, and, and you see exactly what's happened here. Here's the, here's the second half, the second half, here's the first part, here's the first part, and the middle part is the middle part with a star after it, because you can go around that loop as many times as you like. Okay, now this regular expression, this is a somewhat complicated regular expression, simplifies, and just as an example, when it says A epsilon transition equals A, so you can, you can simplify this in algebra of regular expressions, you can simplify that expression down, but the basic idea that you start with a finite state machine and you gradually pick states and then eliminate them until the only state you have left are the, the two that you introduced, and that's the answer, that, that's, that idea holds. Okay, so we have the two halves of the argument. Oops, went one too far. The two halves of the argument. Um, the second half is that if you give me a finite state machine, I can give you a regular expression. The first half was, if you give me a regular expression, I can give you a finite state machine. So we're done. We have Kleene's theorem that a language is recognized by a finite state machine if and only if that language is described by a regular expression. Okay? Okay, and then what we're going to talk about next, then, you see on the screen, is going to be languages that are, that are described by finite state machines or languages that are described by regular expression, so-called regular languages.